spirituality. I want to say two prayers coming from the comedic spirituality. The first one is very short and you need to be pure. You need to have done your purifications, um, also known as ablutions, before you can say these prayers. The first one is sort of like an invocation of the power of Ra and an acknowledgement that we stand on the side of the light. In short, no keka upui abem rei hati rane teru heriwati em rei nuk rei yau nuk bafe hekau. The second one is a little longer, and it is presenting yourself as a pure entity, a being who is looking up towards the divine world, uh, following the 77 commandments, and so on. Un fe neter maneteru im neter girtet, iu fe neter hat fe tem tu, neteri ubai im per seput, neteri fe bain in neteru, neter neteri hebra jesus patu. And so now I'm gonna do this short reading coming from the book that I've been sharing from on my Facebook live posts. Uh, coming from the Ancient Mirrors of Womanhood book, which is a treasury of goddess and heroine lore from around the world, written by Merlin Stone. And this is coming from her research around various divine beings from various cultures and various times and whatnot. And um, there's a very important reason why these readings are necessary in this specific time. I'll tell you a little bit about it. It has to do with the fact that these ancient stories are a reflection of the human story and how we got here and what um, 
divine aspects we carry with us. In other words, coming from the holy drama, the drama that is responsible for our very existence here, our physical manifestation. And we're in a time of acknowledgement of change, right? Thinking about the dung beetle, which comes from the Kemetic system, one of the first self-created gods named Hebra, um, reminds us of the transformation of life and the fact that change is a very constant thing in life. So instead of us continuing to play out these old stories, we can look to them, look to the wise we can there's a there's a proverb that i really like that states don't follow the footsteps of the wise but seek what they sought they had an intention they were seeking something but on that path all kinds of things happened mistakes were made foolishness was done and all of that because when we're looking to realize ourselves, we're liable to do foolishness. So we can look to the examples of the wise, but we don't want to walk in their footsteps. We want to seek what they saw and go beyond that. We want to rewrite the script and change the storyline so as to create the world that we want to see. So this one is about me and the kind of section that describes a little bit before I uh, tell, it's not even a story, it's just some short writing about the goddess me and in recognition of that divine energy. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you what she says here. Even upon a casual reading of Egyptian documents, I want to make sure the volume is up. Even upon a casual reading of Egyptian documents, one will find a multitude of references to the goddess in Egypt as Nut, Net, Nit, Nait, and Nait. We also know her as Naita as well. Although many scholars discuss the first three names as those of one goddess and the last two as another, both Nis and Nut were described as emerging from the primeval waters and as the mistress of heaven. Later texts do generally identify the name Nis with the worship of the goddess in the town of Sais while the name Nut, Net, or Nit are most generally used when referring to the goddess as the divine woman or heavenly cow who is the heavens. To some extent, this confusion results from the lack of vowels in the Egyptian hieroglyphs. Many scholars making educated guesses and inserting vowels to ease the pronunciation. All the above names may be related to the Egyptian word meaning deity, Neter. A good part of the material included in this account is drawn from the early pyramid texts of Unas, Pepi, and Tessi. You see, so this is where she got this from, from our Papi Rai. Um, and the writings and things that our ancestors left here. Most ancient mother, great radiant one, lady of the stars, mistress of the celestial ocean, highest judge, fiery one, who rose from the primordial, the primordial floods. It is Neith who reaches down from the heavens to take the hand of each one who dies taking them into her arms to place them as stars of the universe, each to her perfect body with an emerald light, sowing mortals upon her heavenly self as others sow the green plants of the fields. I want to show you the card for uh, Nut. 
in my tarot deck. I hope I can get to it quickly. And it's the card for chance. And you can see how Mama Nuth has the stars in her body. Here we go. She has the stars in her body. You see, right here. You can look at it in that way. It doesn't exactly look like stars, though. So. Some say that she is Nunit, the primeval waters that once covered all earth. Some say that she is Tefnit, giver of the moisture and the sunlight. Some say that she is the lady of the loom and shuttle, and lady of the arrow and the bow. The lady whose image stood at the most ancient shrine of faith upon the Delta lands, the most sacred image marked. I am all that has ever been. I am all that is. I am all that shall ever be. Yet never have mortal eyes perceived me as I am. Ascending from the primeval waters, her body became the vast heavens, her perfect toes and fingertips touching the earth as she arched over it in cosmic beauty. Did you see? Did you see how we're inside of Mama Nu? The tear from her eye creating the Nile. The stars glowing with emerald light set into her very body. The single word, beauty, marked as glyph between her sacred horns. The earth nestles between her thighs. As daily she gives birth to the sun, each evening accepting him back into her body just as each mortal returns unto her. When the span of life is over, her holy image painted on the ceilings of each tomb, her holy image painted inside the inner lid of the wooden casket in which dead repose. As she leans forth from her celestial sycamore to quench the thirst of afterlife, Joyous was the festival of lamps when all says glowed with flames in honor of her mysteries. Each small dish of oil and salt with woven wick afloat. There's a card for the weaver in my tarot deck as well. Burning brightly through the night in memory of the great fire upon the waters in memory of the fiery one, the great magician Neith. Though if her anger was provoked, she might cause the sky to crash upon the ground. Still, she was the mother of all. Broad-winged goddess who protects from evil, who defends the good with bow and arrow as she once defended those ancient priestesses who took her name, Neet Hotep, Meriet Neet, Her Neet. Priestess queens who ruled when Egypt was young, when only women served at Neet's altars, each knowing throughout her life that she would one day glisten as a star upon the measureless body of the mother of heaven. And so we know Mother Nut to be the mother of God, right? And like she said, the comedic hieroglyphs do not have vowels. So there's a kind of cross connection between Mama Nu, Nut, and Ni is what they're saying. So that's what I want to share with you all. And another reason why the emphasis is around these ancient stories is because we as being those divine beings ourselves and having those divine essences 
within us, uh, the ancestors guided me to create this and I didn't know what they had me making when I first started, but as I continued walking in that faith and that divine inspiration, I was informed that it's the mothership. And then with that, so much knowledge and awareness came to me about what the mothership is. It's a relationship. Um, you know, people have been talking a lot about Big Mama and that Big Mama energy. And um, Hathor is one who is known as the nurturing cow, right? She's big as a cow. But in short, all the, the, the energy of the Divine Mother, the frequency and the righteousness of the mothers has landed back here on Earth. And we are here to set the record straight. You know, even my dad had a joke and my sister brought it to my awareness just today. When I finished this, my dad would say, it's not over until the fat lady sings. And that's what we're talking about. That's Big Mama, that's the mothership, and that's the, in the divine energy of nurturing and mother and mama that cleans house that comes to set the record straight. And so this is what we're doing. We're weeding out that which no longer serves our highest good. With the support of the divine, there is a card here for immortality, uh, and it translates to death in other tarot card decks, and maybe even the depictions on those cards look slightly different but let me show you what is so amazing in this card and i really love it because like how they call it the eternal tarot deck it really is it has the awareness from the most ancient spiritual system the comedic spiritual system the hebrew system the system of numbers and numerology um, and dealing with the aspects of initiation that we go through in life. I said it because I'm looking right at the card for initiation. And you see, this would be the goddess um, known as Taurit, another big mama. Another big mama that don't play. Um... So, I guess I was just saying that we are transforming and transmuting and changing and we're weeding out, here it is, just as I said, weeding out things that come from the Bible, concepts from the Bible too are in here, along with the comedic and the numerology and the astrology and everything, sacred symbols, the uh, separation of the wheat from the tear. So you see the wheat is here and the tear grows with the wheat. But we have to weed it out. We have to separate. We have to use divine discrimination, divine judgment. The tear doesn't serve us. It's the wheat that we need. Thinking about the food of the gods, right? And the ankh. So many of these, um, these cards have beings holding ankhs in their hand. And this card for transmutation is so amazing because this divine being right here has the Shen ring, the Shen in his hand, which is a protection. While there is Renaissance rebirth taking place, there's also divine protection with the Shen ring. And this is the very last card of the tarot deck, which corresponds to the letter Ein. Ein is a very guttural sound. Ein, um, in the Hebrew, in the Hebrew alphabet, and it's ruled by Venus. It has Venus and your you as in universe, Uranus, Urania, and it deals with love, divine love, brotherly, sisterly love. It deals with love for all of humanity. Okay, so I will leave you with that. And the next time I do one of these type of things here, we're going to be reading about Aset, also known as Isis. And that's a, a kind of, it's a longer read, but it's so good.
it's so good to know about and to hear this story. So I bless you with peace and love. Bye-bye.